I had to borrow the spindle off this truck for my off-road rig. So, for the reassembly, I'm going to do a little how-to video. This is how to change an axle shaft and reassemble the spindle and all that stuff, whatever is necessary. So, if you're disassembling it, obviously do the reverse of this. Okay, the first step is to slide in the axle. It's already in here, and I'm not going to pull it out all the way because I don't want to contaminate the end of it, it's already clean. But in any case, it just slides into the carrier in the diff. So that's on. It's already got its seals on here, so I don't have to worry about those. So we have a brand new spindle and a new bearing for the outer shaft, so I gotta put that in there. Optionally, I'm gonna use this socket to tap it in with. So now that we've got our bearing in place and the new spindle and our seals are still on here, we'll put on this part here for the brakes. And then optionally, this dust cover. And then the new spindle. There we are. Then these nuts will pull everything down tight, and you want to tighten these in a star pattern, tighten them, tightening evenly. Now that all these are tight, we can move on to the next step, which is installing the new the uh, spindle again. Now this one still has bearings inside of it, and those bearings are still good. It still has a seal, so I don't have to change any of that. What I am going to do is add a little bit more grease to it, um, just to be sure there's plenty in there. So just scoop some up and put it on the inside. have a new outer wheel bearing because uh, I need to replace that. So the correct way to grease the bearing is put a little bit around the edges then you just kind of shove it in from the edges. Do that several times over. I'm sure there are multiple methods of doing this but Basically, you just want to squeeze some down inside there so it's not dry when it starts out. I use the side of my finger or something on that. Okay, that's pretty good. Cool. Put it down there and the, in back into the spindle. Put a little bit of grease in there behind it. Okay, now that we have the new bearing in there, it's greased up, we're ready to put it on. Just slide that guy on there real straight. Okay, the inner wheel bearing nut has a little uh, tab on it, and that's to lock it into the lock washer so that it can't turn, which, which uh, also has a keyway. Anyhow, so... The, oh, there we get it on all the way. <laughs> Push the bearing back in there, possible. All the way. Okay, now we'll put the inner nut on with the little tab facing outward. Special socket, of course, that fits these. But since I didn't buy one, I have this custom piece of precision tooling here that also fits it. So this is just a piece of square tubing, obviously, with some cut off and ground down bolts welded to it. So we'll fit that into the inner bearing. Tighten it down. 
In order to set the inner bearing, you want to crank this down fairly tight to begin with. And then give it a turn or two. Oh wow, he's just staring like he's film that. And I just noticed that my tie rod end needs to be replaced. It's got a little bit of, a lot of play in it. So I'll replace that later. Anyway, so at first you want to tighten down the inner nut pretty tight and that sets the bearing. Once the bearing is set, you can back it off just a hair. You want to make sure this thing spins freely. It doesn't have any play in it. If you grab the rotor and pull on it, it's got to be good and firm. Of course, the bearing's too tight, it's going to wear out quickly, and if it's too loose, it's going to go bad. Next step, you need to get the lock washer on. And this is sometimes tricky because you got to get that little pin to line up with one of these holes. If it doesn't, you can flip it over, but you might end up having to tighten it slightly or loosen it slightly, the inner nut, in order to get it to line up. Okay, it did not line up. So if I can get it back off of there, it didn't go on the first way, so I flip it around, try again, and it went on. Here, film in here. Yeah, you can see the pin lined up with the hole right there, so it's set firmly against it. I don't know if you can see it on the camera or not, but whatever. So yeah, you can. now we can put on the other lock nut on top of it. Now this one will tighten down fairly tight against the first one because it doesn't set the bearing load, it just locks it in place. Okay, and using my precision tool, I'm going to tighten down the outer wheel bearing nut. Okay, the next part that goes in is the locking hub. And I'm going to put a little bit of grease on the inside of it. The part that goes in against the uh, uh, bearings and stuff just to help lubricate the bearings. A little more grease for them. Now, you don't want to over grease the hubs, particularly, let's see, it just slides in there. Particularly this part. Um, if you get a lot of grease in there and it gets behind this part, this is what actually pushes in when you lock your, uh, when you lock your locking hubs, that pushes in and engages it to lock the, the hub in. If you get too much grease in there, it gets behind that, it can sort of like the grease can hydro lock that. Then when you go to lock your hub, it either won't go in or it'll only go in part way and then shear the teeth off. So a little bit of grease is good, but not too much. So once the hub is in, you take this snap ring. By the way, these are very sometimes very difficult to remove when they're on. You gotta pry up on these these little tabs here uh, with a small flat blade screwdriver and then uh, up, probably up and out on those. In any case, it's ready to go back in now, so push that sucker in. There. This is actually optional. This is the snap ring for the for the uh, stub shaft. You don't have to have that because it'll center itself. You got to maybe reach back here and make sure that the, push on the U joint. Make sure that the bearing's all the way out here. Come the front. See there, because you, you got a little bit of play there, so. Once that's all the way out, you can use your snap ring pliers. Just open it up and oh, there it went back in. I'll push it back out again. Use the snap ring pliers, just get that in the groove there. That's all there is to it. So once that's in place, we're ready to install the locking hub. So once all these nuts are tightened down, then this stage is done. We can spin it, make sure it spins nicely, freely. We can try locking it, and it did lock. The uh, axle is turning behind the hub, and it unlocked. So that stage is done. Now it's time to put the brakes back on. Okay, this caliper was leaking also, so I'm going to go ahead and replace it with a new one. Take the line loose, it's going to start leaking all over. OK, 
Okay, these little copper seals, I'm, the new caliper came with new ones. So I'll replace those as well. I'm trying to hurry since I'm losing Rick Hood. This one, tighten down the banjo fitting. Now, of course, I'm going to have to bleed the brakes too, but I'm not going to include that in this video. Now that the new brake caliper is ready to go, I'm going to put it back on. But first, I'm going to take a little bit of grease and put it in these grooves here on the end of the caliper. Both ends here, just. A little bit because when you step on the brakes it actually slides very slightly and this will keep it from binding up and causing problems such as stuck brakes or broken calipers. I'm also going to clean out the other grooves, the grooves where it goes on the other side and put a little bit of grease in them too. on with the little flanges facing outward. Just tap those in until they click through on the other side. There we go. Okay, that's all done. So now all the stuff is we put the wheel back on. It's done.